is our Eat Fat to Lose Fat lecture. Um, this is our second time doing this class and we put it in the conference room because it was so well attended last year. Um, and we always have more men at this class than any other class. So I think that the um, snake is out of the bag. You heard that we were gonna say that you can eat butter and eat bacon and still lose weight. So I think that's why we get a big audience to these things. You think I'm right? So tonight you have the pleasure of not only hearing from me, but we have two guest speakers that I will introduce um, in a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is just kind of set up the topic for you and explain why we talk about this and how we got to kind of become a nation that was brought up with the ideas that fat is our enemy and that it's bad for you to eat fat. Um, and then Miss Stephanie, Captain Stephanie Lincoln is here from Fireteam Whiskey. She's going to talk more about the science of it all and how it works and how to implement it into your lifestyle and diet. Because in our office, what we found is, I think people think when we start talking about um, the ketogenic diet, that you think that everybody has to do the same exact thing or that it has to be really complicated or you have to start counting a lot of stuff out. And what we want you to gain from tonight is to know that there's different styles of ketogenic and you can customize it based on your body and your own individual needs. And so hopefully, you know, well first of all, let me get an idea in the audience. Who is currently doing a ketogenic diet? Okay. Yeah, and how many people are like, have dabbled in it. Isn't it a little bit like paleo? A little bit, it's low carb, but the paleo doesn't add the fats in that you need. So that's what we'll be talking about tonight. So it's just helpful for me to understand. It sounds like we have people with all different levels of understanding of what ketogenic is. And we hope to speak to all of those levels, whether you're currently doing it and just need some ideas on how to maintain it, or if you're brand new to it, or really thought maybe it's not for you because it's too complicated to speak to all of those levels. So naturally, in order to talk about fat, we need to understand what fat is. So fat is just one of your macronutrients, right? So you don't have to have a PhD in nutrition to know that there are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, right? So fats, um, the reason why people are interested in a ketogenic or high fat diet is because when you burn fats, it's a more sustainable energy because it's slow burning. So when you burn carbohydrates for fuel, they go through you really quickly, right? So you guys have probably experienced that where you'll have a craving in the afternoon or maybe an energy slump and you make a maybe not so great choice with a high carb diet or something in a vending machine or go to a fast food line or something that's convenient, but then you find like an hour or two later, your energy's crashed right back out and you're starving all over again. So that's what I mean. The difference between a fast burning energy source would be that carbohydrate where it raises you up but then you really quickly come back down versus a fat would keep you more even keeled, keeps your blood sugar and your energy and your appetite more even, okay? So then we also need to know that forever and ever, even in my nutritional world, we were always taught by our colleagues and mentors that your glucose was the only energy that your brain could run on. Did anybody ever also hear that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were taught that all through school and everything. But if now that we know with the leading research, ketones are actually the preferred fuel for the brain. So a lot of people are doing ketogenic diets for increased alertness, you know, mental awareness, um, just running better cognition and memory, as well as burning fat and losing weight and just being higher performing. So like a lot of the athletic community even is into this. But I always say like, I think you could sell me anything if you told me it gave me better energy and I could think more clearly. I'm like, oh man, let's try it. I'll be your <laughs> guinea pig, right? So there's a lot of um, attraction to this type of style of eating. Okay, so let's talk about then what are ketones. Um, ketones, also called ketone body, bodies, are just byproducts of when the body switches over to that fat burning metabolism. So when the carbohydrates are low and you get enough fat, the body breaks those down and ketones are what's left over. So therefore ketosis is the result of following a ketogenic diet. Um, ketosis takes place when the glucose from carbo carbohydrate foods like grains, um, sugar, even fruit, when you drastically reduce that, it forces the body to find an alternate fuel source and then you burn fat. 
So I think everybody understands, like, we want to burn fat, right? Mm -hmm. You want to maintain muscle or gain muscle because the more muscle you have, the more um, calories your body burns at rest, and you want to burn fat. Um, we were going to have a video, and we had a little technical difficulty. Is that something maybe we could email out as a oh, link? Yeah, I, okay. I could post it, um, get the link um, on the uh, yeah, on the Facebook page. So yes. check back to the Facebook link, the Facebook event that you RSVP to come here tonight, and we'll put the link for that video so you can still get it. It just real makes a real simple video out of what is ketosis and what happens in your body when it's burning that fuel instead of carbohydrates. It's really easy to understand. So let's think about it for a minute. Like, How did we get to the point where fat got a bad rap in the first place? Because it was once thought that dietary fat was what caused you to be fat. But what we now know, and I had to change the percentages because they're updated because we keep continuing to increase our research, but it was once thought that you got fat because of the fat you ate. We now know that the majority of your fat is endogenous. Your body manufactures it, and there's a bunch of reasons why, but carbohydrate intake is what actually increases your body fat production, not fat to low. Um, so Fat-free nation, you know, with the onslaught also of all the fat-free products. I don't know, what age was that in? The 90s. The 90s, mm -hmm. the fat-free products came about. And so what they scared people about eating fats. And so naturally, when you strip one entire food group out of your diet, you have to increase other, you know, food types. And so what happened is people increased the carbohydrates and they actually put sugars to flavor the food, right? So if you take all the fats out, you gotta put something in else in to make it taste good. And so they did that by adding sugar. And so now we became a carb, you know, carb heavy nation. Well, at the same time as the 90s to current times today, you can see graphs where the increase in obesity, diabetes, cancer, and even heart disease has started to soar in direct proportion. So we really kind of made a mess by, uh, you know, going after fats as the enemies. So I want to talk about why fat is important so you can understand, you know, if that's a third of our intake as far as macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, or proteins, don't you think they're kind of important? Like they were put on this earth for a reason. The reasons why fat is important is for all of the above. Your hormone health relies on fats. You actually need um, healthy fat intake to make fats or to make hormones. Um, your mind, so that's your mental health, your mood, your cognitive function. So just think about how many Americans are on some kind of mind altering medication for anxiety, depression, the whole nine. Maybe we're just a fat deprived nation and if we got to the root cause of the deficiency, we wouldn't need those medications. Um, weight control, so Stephanie and Melissa are gonna talk a lot about the weight side of things, and what, you know, obviously, there's a lot of health benefits to changing your diet. Anytime you make positive changes, you're gonna affect your whole body. That's why like this list pretty much encompasses every body region on the body. But most people, get to the point where their weight becomes their primary, you know, motivating factor because that's an outward reflection of what's going on on the inside. So suddenly people are like, okay, I don't look the way I used to look. I can't wear the clothes and that becomes a motivator, which is great, but there's more even, even more benefit to doing this than just the weight loss alone. Um, all your cells are made up of uh, proteins and fats. So the cellular material, the actual outside lining of all the cells, requires fats to be healthy so that they can heal and so that they can repair and do just whatever their cellular function is. Your digestive health requires fat intake, your kidney function, um, energy and endurance because it is that preferred fuel um, source. Hair, skin, and nails. We did an entire lecture on hair, skin, and nails um, for Mother's Day a month or so ago, and we talked a lot about fat intake during that time. Um, food cravings. So when you have cravings, it's usually an indicator that the body's looking for something. You're craving, you might think it's a carb that you want or a cheeseburger or a french fry or whatever, but in fact the body's looking for some kind of deficient mineral or nutrient. Um, to feel satiated, so what, to be satisfied and not to have constant hunger. Your cardiovascular health, now isn't that contraindicated? Mm -hmm. You 
would think. And we were just laughing because we have a patient who is doing amazing. All her stats and blood work show she's doing great. She's dropping um, pounds. Her, um, you know, clothes aren't fitting her. She's going down in waistband size. And her doctor is still, even with the evidence in front of their faces, are just so, I don't know. I don't know. You're going to fill in the adjective, I guess. <laughs> I know my camera is very careful. Stop doing keto when all her blood work is improving. They're just Doing brainwashed to She's think, you know, better. fat. Yeah, they still think fat is the enemy. So even with all the evidence in front of them, they're like, this can't be right. You know what I mean? So the cardiologists are still like, some of them are on board. Like, there's not, it's not our all or nothing. We have tons of research from cardiologists and the medical world itself that supports this. And if you do it right, we can show you that your blood labs will support it. You know, and you can always know that you can repeat your blood work and do this safely and know that your triglycerides are normal, your HDL and LDLs are normal, and the whole nine. Um, athletic performance, bone health, um, insulin sensitivity. So before people become diabetic, they could actually just be insulin sensitive first, and then if that's not handled, it goes into diabetes after the fact. Reduced inflammation. Did you know you could eat fat to reduce your inflammation, which in fact would reduce your pain? Now, you have to learn what are good fats and bad fats, and we're gonna teach you that. So that's the number one disclaimer. We're not saying all fats are created equal. It's the same thing as any nutrient, or even any chiropractor. Like, not everything is the same. You can't say all supplements are the same thing. So what we need to help you learn is how to decipher good fat, bad fat. Reducing cancer risk, so the ketogenic diet, because cancer cells feed off of carbohydrates and sugar, the ketogenic diet has actually been shown to starve cancer cells. That's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. um, your fats are there to cushion your joints and your organs as well. So it's in there just kind of as a, um, a shock absorber. So it's important for your spine and for um, just movement and motility. Um, there are vitamins that are fat soluble. Have you guys all heard that? Mm -hmm. So vitamin A, vitamin D. So vitamin D deficiency is epidemic and perhaps it's because we started on this whole fat free nation in the first place. And vitamin K, which is important for like blood clotting, for example. You need fats to absorb your minerals and your proteins. So in our office, if we give you for, for example, a calcium supplement, we also give you a Cataplex F or a Tuna Omega or some kind of fatty acid to go with it to increase the absorption of those minerals. Fertility and reproduction, because we talked about the hormones, you need fats to produce hormones. So that's another epidemic in our country where women are spending a ton of money to try to get pregnant with for, you know, fertility methods. Um, what about the kids? Infant physical and mental development, right? So you know that you need like fatty acids and folic acid and stuff like that when you get pregnant to support the developing baby, but they really need it. Like we would increase fats hugely in infants and toddlers. And you also need fats for heavy metal detoxification. So isn't that a huge long list that kind of paints the picture? Like we're in a whole lot of trouble if we start going fat free, right? So on the back, um, there's two columns. We talked about healthy fats and then unhealthy fats. So this is hopefully a good shopping list. And Melissa's gonna give you an even more detailed shopping oh, list. Already, already yeah, handed already it out? It to okay, good. Um, Cause this just talks about the fats, but then her shopping list also teaches you like what are um, ketogenic friendly fruits, vegetables, fats, oils, proteins, right? Yeah. yeah. Good. So you can kind of read that at your own leisure. I don't need to read the list to you. Um, what I will disclaim on this is again, the quality. So a lot of ketogenic diets are like, woohoo, I can eat like salami and bologna. And that was kind of like the old Atkins thing, right? Like you can, but if it's the right quality. So uncured organic, which would make it low inflammatory. <laughs> so again, everything isn't created equally. When we're talking about butter, we're talking about grass-fed butter, like Kerrygold, for example. Um, you can read it through here. Um, fat myths, here's the fat myths. Eating fat makes you fat, it doesn't. 
Eating fat raises cholesterol and causes heart disease. It doesn't if you know what you're doing and are learning the proper way to do it and the right quality of the foods. Um, low fat foods are a healthier option. They're not. Usually they're still a high fat food. They're just lower fat than the original version, the original mm -hmm. recipe. So that's labeling and marketing to trick you and think you're buying a heart healthy product. Also, did you guys know that that heart healthy label, have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Like Cheerios has it, yeah. for example. Well, a lot more companies have it. They bought it. They bought the right to put that heart healthy sticker, whatever, stamp on their product. It doesn't mean anything. There's no like actual medical claims to it or any proof or evidence that it actually improves your health or even fights heart disease, right? Um, and that's part of our reading labels class. So if you need to learn more about how to be a smart consumer and get you know, around some of these myths and marketing tactics, um, definitely come to one of our reading labels classes or even like the grocery store tours. We did have you come to a grocery store tour. We would tear it out <laughs> <laughs> Um, Canola and vegetable oils all usually have that heart healthy sticker on it. They are not. They are on our unhealthy fat list. Um, oh, here's a fun one. It's healthier to have cholesterol levels below 200. So if they teach, so it used to be 220 was the acceptable range. And now it's was 200 and in fact now they've brought it down to 180. So when they make those claims, do you know what they just did? They just increased the population of people by hundreds of thousands that they can sell statin medications to. So there goes their paycheck, right? I know people are like <laughs> headbutting themselves back there. <laughs> so if your cholesterol levels get too low, you can't manufacture hormones. We have infertility going through the roof. We've got libido issues going through the roof and we've got the little purple pill, right? It's true. And now they got another medication they can sell you. So you get on statins, then you end up on the little purple pill for your libido, and then you end up having Alzheimer's because you don't have enough fats for your brain cells. And that is a statistical progression of what we are seeing. I like that this makes people smile. <laughs> this isn't the audience that gets mad. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Somebody out there is really mad, but I don't care. <laughs> um, saturated fat, we were always taught that that's bad. Saturated fats are bad for you. So there's long chain triglycerides, medium chain, and short chain. So the medium chain triglycerides, which are your coconut oil, your MCT, and palm oils, those are beneficial and in fact help you burn fat. So that's a saturated fat that's actually good for you. So again, you have to learn what these terms and labels mean and kind of break it down a little bit more. So let's talk about blood work because a lot of patients will come in and they're all proud like, okay, I wanna show you my like, blood levels and all this. Um, the total cholesterol, 180 to 220 is normal. Well, don't freak out if you have 220, and you need to look at the breakdown. So the total cholesterol, just like your weight, is it does not tell you the total story, right? So we need to look at triglycerides. So when I look at blood work, and a patient tells me that they're eating low carb and they're staying away from the sugars and the grains and the pastas and everything, I look right at that triglyceride level. And if it's elevated, I, it's my BS meter. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody's like, ooh, I'm gonna pull, pull my blood work out. Right. Because I can tell if you're eating carbohydrates by the triglyceride number. But your triglyceride number should be half of your total cholesterol. So if your cholesterol is 200, your triglyceride should be 100 or lower. Does that make sense? Okay, um, the HDL is the happy cholesterol, the good one. So that's raised by eating healthy fats. So a lot of times people's cholesterol is a good level, but the ratios are off because they have more high, more of the bad cholesterol and not enough good cholesterol. And sometimes we can make your ratios be healthy just by increasing the healthy fats and getting those HDL levels up because that's the next one where it says the HDL over the LDL level, and there's also like a total cholesterol over HDL. All these ratios that we would examine are more important than any of the individual data or numbers on their own, okay? So can you see like in holistic or functional medicine, we're gonna scrutinize your blood work a lot differently than just is it normal or abnormal, okay? So there's more that needs to be analyzed in that blood work. 
and there's actually new panels. We just joined a Bloodwork co-op, and what that does is allows us to um, offer uh, panels of Blood Labs at very affordable amounts. So if you don't have health insurance or you have a very high deductible plan and you haven't been able to get your blood labs in a while, ask us about some of the pricing and packages and panels because it allows you to pay out of pocket at a very reasonable fee. So for example, for me up in upstate New York, I had just like, I went crazy and I was like, I'm gonna just get everything tested because I'm a guinea pig. Like I do that for your benefit for my research. And it cost me over $700 to get the whole panel. And this company, the same panel is like between two and 300, so significantly better. And we can also just order individual blood labs, so if you just wanted a cholesterol or something, we just order a PSA, or sometimes people have had a whole panel of blood work and then we only just want to reorder what was abnormal to make sure it's now normal, we can do that, like just the individual test. So just food for thought, if you do want to get blood work, we could check on that for you and scrutinize it a little bit differently than just normal abnormal. Um, but the reason I brought that up is because there's a whole new panel through this company um, that actually does the ratios of omega-3, 6s, and 9s, right? So omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, and then the ratio of 6s and 9s are pro-inflammatory. So we can actually measure that in the body, too, to get you on the right supplemental level. So I thought that was really cool. Okay, so I'm going to rest my tired little voice. Um, Captain Stephanie Lincoln from Fireteam Whiskey is going to come up and she's going to give you um, a little bit more science on it and then also some implementation um, tips. Come on over. Are you going to use the microphone? I don't need to. I brought it for you. <laughs> All right. So I'm Captain Stephanie Lincoln and I own a company called Fireteam Whiskey and um, I'm going to tell you my story first because it'll make sense a little bit later when I tell you why Fireteam Whiskey, what the heck is that and why do I make bars and shakes. So um, in 2015, 2014, 2015, I was at the highest weight I've ever been in, in my adult life. But I had always struggled basically throughout my teens with gaining weight so i would be able to you know gain some weight over, usually over the fall and the winter like most of us do and then in the spring get really nervous about how you're going to look in that bathing suit you know and over exercise and restrict my calories and do crazy diets i mean i did it all i even did ephedra and damaged my heart so um i did everything under the sun and i was able to you know lose the weight that worked really well in my teens and 20s Soon, I mean, I'm telling you, the minute I turned 30, like that second, I was done. My body said, nope, it's not going to work anymore. So I did the same cycle and tried all those old tricks that I used to be able to use to lose the weight. And I, I could barely lose the weight. I'd maybe lose a couple of pounds and I'd put it right back on then some. And so as time went on, my weight started climbing. And what's crazy about this, so you look at me now, I look pretty athletic, right? I've always been an athlete. And I was considered the healthy one. Out of like any friend or family member, if you ask, oh yeah, Stephanie's really healthy. Like she's like an athlete, she works out all the time. I used to do adventure racing. I was on a sponsored team. I used to work out two, three, four hours. I used to run like 20 miles a week. And I was overweight. So there was something going on in my body and I did not understand it in the conventional sense because I was doing everything right according to what the world tells you to do, right? Cut back on your calories, exercise more, right? Well, I was doing that. I was eating whole grains and fruit and vegetables and low fat dairy and lean proteins, all the stuff that we're told to do, I was doing. Yet I kept gaining weight. And so when I reached my highest point in my weight, um, I, that didn't really trigger me. It was seeing a picture of myself on Thanksgiving Day that my sister posted on social media. And it was like she slapped me in the face. I could not believe how I had like let myself go. But I hadn't let myself go. And that was the, the really unnerving thing about this whole process for me was I was doing everything right. So... 
I had to completely drop everything and figure out a new way to do things. So ignore the conventional wisdom, ignore all the things that I tried in the past that were not working, <clears throat> and start doing some research. And I stumbled upon the ketogenic diet. And I, I, I'm a nerd, so I read like 10 books on it first before I even tried it. And then I was still skeptical, right? I was like, no way. There's, there's no way. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna gain 50 pounds trying to do this. <laughs> so I decided to ease myself into it, right? I started adding healthy fats. I cut back my carbs. I reduced it down to like two servings a day. Increased the healthy fats. And over the course of a couple weeks, I started noticing some things. And it wasn't in the scale. I mean, yes, that started to tick down pretty gradually. Not super fast. But I noticed, oh my gosh, I actually was really sick and I didn't even realize I was sick. It was just things that I had decided that were my lot in life, right? That, that I, I just had bad genes or these, these issues and I just had to deal with it. So I had headaches weekly. I had horrible fatigue, like I would hit a brick wall in the afternoon. I could lay down and take a nap at any time in the day. I slept like crap. I never felt rested. It was so hard for me to go to sleep. It was hard for me to stay asleep. Um, I had horrible adult acne, it, like throughout my, my teens and 20s, it just, I tried everything, it wouldn't go away. Um, I would have stomach pains and constipation. I had anxiety and depression. And I was just, just miserable, just, you know, but you, Oh, and aches and pains. In my, in my 30s, aches and pains in my joints. My knees always hurt, my back always hurt. And I just thought, oh, okay, well, I was in the Army for 10 years. You know, it just comes with the territory, right? You know, it's just what it is. But as soon as I started the ketogenic diet, I started noticing these things were kind of ticking back. And I was like, okay, let me fully commit to this. So I did. So I am a little over two years later right now standing before you. I am 20 pounds lighter and my body fat has been cut in half. I was about 35, 38% body fat. I'm now at 17% body fat. Woo! <laughs> yeah! But what's even better is, so the scale didn't change hugely for me, right? But I wore about a size 10 when I was at my heaviest, I wear a size two now. So not a huge change in the scale, but my body composition has changed. And even better than all of that, I would exchange all of that for this. I have almost zero headaches ever. I have energy through the roof. I mean, everybody knows me, it's just like, she never slows down. Like she just go, 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 go. I work like 16 hour days and I love it. I um, used to struggle with low blood sugar constantly to the point where I had passing out episodes that were very dangerous. I used to have to carry food around me everywhere. Completely cured of that. Um, look at my skin. It's never looked better. In fact, I think I look 10 years younger than I did two years ago. My skin has never looked better. I can't keep up with my hair and nails with cutting constantly, it just grows like crazy. Um, my, I, the back pain and the knee pain that I thought I had gotten from the army, completely gone. Absolutely, completely gone. So just that, I mean, forget the weight loss. If I could just have that, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. And I stumbled upon it because I was sick and tired and I didn't know I was sick and tired until I started to change my diet. So it inspired me so much, and especially, you know, my passion for the military and first responders that I started my own company called Fire Team Whiskey. And I share these programs. I wrote four ketogenic eating plans that step military members and first responders into this lifestyle. And I created my own keto line of bars and shakes in order to help them do that because we know they're always on the go. They need something portable. I have people in Iraq doing my program right now, eating my bars and shakes, and losing weight like crazy, and feeling fantastic, and you know, aren't eating the crap that they're being given in the, in the chow halls anymore. So that was the inspiration be, behind Fireteam Whiskey. So this is what I do on a daily basis. 
Um, I'm a certified personal trainer and I'm an eating psychology specialist. I actually have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I have specialized training in eating psychology. So I help people get through their kind of um, their emotional attachments to food because we have a lot of those and help work them through that process. So what I'm talking about today, um, Dr. Christie covered a lot of the awesome science behind it and um, I wanted to go a little bit more into, so I have a fun little um, way I explain ketosis. And this, you'll totally get it after this. Like it totally makes sense to me when I think of it this way. So you only have one hormone in your body that tells, that commands your body to, to keep body fat and to store body, body fat. Does anybody know what that hormone is? <laughs> it seems like it, wouldn't it? <laughs> but no. Insulin, yes. So insulin is the hormone that tells your body to store fat or release fat. Okay? So I think of insulin as two things. So think of a little Uber, like an Uber car, you know, you call an Uber. So they're a transport mechanism. And the Uber has a key on the end of it. So you need the Uber key. So what insulin does is it's triggered so it's hiding it's just dormant hanging out and they get a call right I'm an uber driver I get a call I got to go pick this person up well what triggers them is the consumption of carbohydrates and sugar so when you consume carbohydrates and sugar all this insulin gets released right and we know this because anybody in here who is diabetic would know that right so you know that you have control of your insulin so your insulin's released so insulin's job is to pick up all that glycogen, right? Pick it up, put it in the Uber, and I've got to get it to where it needs to be. Where does it need to be? The cells, right? To use this energy. So I go take this glycogen to the cells. Well, I get to the cell, and I insert the key to let my, my passenger safely into the cell to use it as energy, and I can't get the key in. It's jammed. It's broken. And then I look, there's some more you know, locks around the cell, and that one's broken, this one's broken, this one's broken. So majority of these locks are broken. So it can't go in the cell to be used as energy. So what can I do with it? Well, we gotta store it. I can't excrete it. It has to be stored as fat. So we're just gonna save this for later whenever the body needs it. So the reason why our cell locks are broken is just think about it. If you have a lock at home and you're jamming keys in it every single day, over and over and over again, all day, all night, right? Don't you think that lock would get broken at some point? So that's what we're doing to our cells by a lifetime of eating sugar and carbs. We're breaking those, those locks on our cells. So that's when we, we become what's called insulin resistant, or even to the point of developing prediabetes or diabetes, right? So what our cells need, like Dr. Christie was talking about, is to be repaired, right? We need a locksmith. So who's the locksmith? Does anybody remember what she talked about? What heals cells? She talked about what's rats around the cells? Fats. So if we're eating low fat, we're not getting the building blocks we need. We're not getting the locksmiths in there to fix the locks. But you can't fix the locks if a locksmith comes and I'm still trying to jam a key in there and he's like, whoa, I can't fix it. So you need to back off. So you need to let the cell rest so the locksmith can do its work and you've done decades of damage to it so don't expect this to work overnight and need some time to heal. So lots and lots of science has shown, and I personally worked with clients who are diabetic, pre-diabetic, and I have had clients who have completely been off insulin and metformin within two weeks of the keto diet. I had two high-risk pregnancy clients who were uh, gestational diabetics that we cured within two weeks of this diet. So that tells you how powerful just that rest. Our body knows what to do. I mean, that's what Dr. Christie's practice is all about, is the body has the building blocks to heal. You just have to give it what it needs to heal itself. 
and back off of the things that are causing the damage, right? That's exactly what she does in her practice. And that's what I help military members and first responders do as well. So those ketones that she was talking about are these really, really neat molecules. And what's the best part about ketones, guys, it can't be stored as fat. They have to be excreted, either used as energy or excreted, usually through your urine or your breath. So that's why um, you've heard like people who are in ketosis have bad breath. It's because their body's excreting those ketones that, that they don't need because your body's working so efficiently and it's not storing it as fat. So I would definitely rather eat foods and have them excreted out of my urine and, and my lungs than have it stored as fat, right? Can anybody disagree with that, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you're eating like for free, you know? Like there's no penalty. <laughs> It's crazy. So that's why it's so amazing is because, I, and I, I love shocking people when I tell them, I eat 80 to 90% fat, and I've been doing it for two years. So if you think you're, oh, I'm gonna be as big as a house, that's not how your body works, guys. That is not the science behind it. So, you know, you have to kind of reverse your thoughts. I went through it too but this is the way the body works. And, it, and when you break it down like that, it actually totally makes sense, right? So um, what can I eat? So I'm, I'm the, the guru that helps people with their fitness and health. What can I eat? You know, that's what the biggest question that people, well, gosh, you know, it's, I can't have bread and I can't have oatmeal and I can't have fruit. So what the heck can I eat? Oh, I love my sandwiches. I love my oatmeal. You know, I'm, I had a client who just like yeah. not yet, like she had to have her damn toast. <laughs> yeah. was like, oh. So what can I eat? And you got those awesome lists, so I'm so glad you do. Um, you can eat any meats, basically. And I would definitely advise, like Dr. Christy said, um, if you are eating a animal product, have it be the highest quality as possible. Um, and here's why. So not only are you, you gonna you know, get the best benefits out of it, but if you think about it, it's from an animal, right? So if the animal is stressed, so if it's in a condition where it's stressed out, it's not being taken care of, it's being you know, mistreated in any way, then all of those hormones are being pumped out into their systems, right? And then you, you were consuming a stress animal product. So you're gonna get those byproducts of the stress. So you may have you know, higher levels of cortisol in um, a low grade like commercial um, animal product. So you don't want that in your body, right? We're trying to control your hormones. We don't need to be adding all these stressed out hormones in, in the, by the way you eat. So the highest quality meats. Um, pretty much any green vegetable, you can eat. Um, limiting the starchy vegetables, I, I'm not very strict about that. I mean, I'll have a sweet potato every once in a while, you know, or yam or, you know, like, I'm not a religious keto person, by the way. I'm, I, there are a lot of them out there, and I'm not. I think, you know, you find a version of it that works for you, and if your body is responding nicely, good to go. I'm not a religious, you know, like, oh, you have to stay under five grams of carbs. Ugh. You know, you're not really keto. Like, who cares? It works for me. I feel fantastic. Why, why change it? So, um, uh, fruits. So limit your fruits. So here's, here's how I describe it. Here's how I think of it. So our ancestors survived this long. How? By eating stuff in a box? Do they have grocery stores? No? Did they go through drive throughs No. Nope. Did they track their steps and track their heart rate and track this and track that and have these fancy smart thingies that are supposed to tell them how to be healthy? No, they survived just fine, right? So just think about it. Just go back to how, how did the caveman live? How, how did our ancestors live? Just live like that. Just do that. So they got up. And did they go through, through Starbucks and get a, a double whatever, whatever? <laughs> double sugar, sugar, sugar? Yeah. <laughs> no, 
They got up, they got ready for the day, and they went out and hunt, hunted and foraged and everything else that they had to do for the day. So normally they fasted, unless maybe along the way they found something, had a little snack, you know, maybe some berries here and there. But no, they didn't have a huge meal in the morning, right? They got up, they, they did what they needed to do. And usually they would come together, they'd hunt, gather, and forage, come together at night, get it all together, and they'd have a feast. And whatever they ate or whatever they found, they ate. Maybe they didn't find anything. So guess what? They didn't eat that day. Did they die? Did they die of low blood sugar? I love that. Oh, my blood. I have to eat every two hours. Well, yeah, because you've, you've basically made your body addicted to just the, the glucose. And here's why that works, guys. So here's how I think of it. She talked about glucose and ketones. Those are the two energy sources in our body, right? We all agree on that? I think of the glucose as a match. And I think of ketones as a, uh, a candle. So if we turned out the lights in here and I handed you a match, a whole box of matches, how about that? And I say, okay, light up the room. We have to finish the rest of this lecture and we need some light. So go ahead and start lighting matches. <laughs> yeah? So she'd light one and they go out. And she'd have to light another one. They'd go out. They'll light another one and go out. Light another one and go out. Well, yeah, it provides the energy, right? It provides the energy to light the room, but not for very long. It's quick. You can strike a match pretty quickly, but it doesn't last very long. That's glucose. So it works. It provides energy to the cells, but it doesn't last very long. And the body likes to use glucose because it's easy. The body's lazy. It's all about conserving energy. So it's gonna do the easiest thing. But if I handed you a candle and said, okay, let's light the room. You have to light a match or use a lighter. And it takes a little time to, to burn a candle, right? You have to kind of stick the flame on the wick and go, okay, and you gotta watch it and make sure it takes, you know, cause it might just like, you know, get a little smoke and go right out. And then you gotta wait and then let it burn a little bit, make sure the wax is getting good and hot, and then it burns forever, right? I mean, hours and hours and hours and hours. That's ketones. That's the en energy your body gets from ketones. So that is what you want to be working on, right? Does anybody disagree with that? Would you rather just strike matches constantly and constantly have to eat to get that energy back up and do this blood sugar roller coaster all day and feel like crap in two hours or starving within 30 minutes right after you ate? So the ketones are very, very long lasting, efficient source, but it takes a little longer for your body to flip over to using that as energy. So that's what's called fat adapted. So you hear about people being in ketosis or <laughs> fat adapted, that's what they mean. As my body has now gotten comfortable with flipping from using glucose to fat. But if I've been doing glucose, glucose, glucose every single day for 30 years, my body's gonna be like, whoa, when glucose runs out. That's why people have low blood sugar and it, it gets painful and it gets uncomfortable, right? And you feel like dizzy and tired and lethargic. It's because your body hasn't figured out how to switch back yet, but it will. You just have to give it some time and just keep consistent at it and it will become fat adapted. So then you can easily flip back and forth. I have some higher carb days. I have some more higher, you know, lower carb and higher fat days. My body now has, is adapted so well that I can switch back and forth really easily, not have any issues and not gain the weight. I haven't gained a pound back. And two years later, talk about like long-term benefits with this guys. Two years later, I, my body fat continues to drop. I'm not doing anything different. It's just because my body has had the time to heal and it's getting more and more efficient and healing itself from within. And I've just eaten in a way that allows my body to do that. Awesome. Good. Hi everybody. My name's Melissa Warner and I wanted to give y'all a little bit of my story. It's crazy, I didn't realize Stephanie, um, she said her journey began in 2015 and that's when my journey began. Um, I've always been athletic, it's just everything that came out of her mouth was just like me. I was always the fit one, um, I was a stay-at-home mom, I taught uh, group fitness, cycling, 
never really had problems with my weight. You know, I did the uh, college game, you know, 10, 15 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, but then I was I could just change my diet and maybe cut back on my calories or not eat much and then lose the weight real easily. Well, that started to change. I got older. Um, but what the key thing was is I tore my ACL and I was out for a whole year. And so I went from exercising and eating right to, I was still eating right, but I was not exercising. I literally was off my feet and going through physical therapy for a year. Well, I was released in 2015 and I had looked at a picture of myself and um, it was like, I knew I was gonna be able to start working out again in um, January. So I kind of was like, well, let me just eat some, you know, it's not gonna matter. Let me gain a little bit more weight. You know, I'm gonna enjoy the holidays, <laughs> you know, have the cakes and the pies and um, come the end of December, I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? This is gonna be so hard. So I started working out again in January and changed to the ketogenic diet. Um, well, more of a low carb, high fat. Um, I wasn't real strict, but I freaked out about the, the fat thing. I was like, there's no way I can eat fat and lose fat because that's just not the way we were brought up. I was born in the 60s. Um, you know, that's when everything was low fat. You know, my mom always did 2%, 1%. Um, so when my uh, trainer said, okay, you need to eat full, you can eat full cream cheese, full sour cream. I'm like, no, no. Well, so I started and I'm like, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. You know, the full fat stuff, you're not tasting, you know. Um, and then I didn't realize how much sugar is in the low fat. I mean, like she said, like uh, Dr. Christie said, they put sugar in there to make it taste better. Well, the sugar, your body starts using that sugar instead of your fat. Well, so I started with the diet, did great, what started, you know, working out. And, you know, I believe in exercise. Um, I don't think you have to go out and work out every single, you know, like lift weights and everything, but I just, you need to do something to move, walk your dog, do some kind of walking. But with me, I, I get pretty intense, but I got to a point, um, it was November 2016, and I just kind of got to a plateau. Um, nothing was changing. I was still doing the same thing. I was eating um, the same things that, you know, doing good, but I um, felt like I just needed something. My trainer said, you know, there's this product that we have. It's called Keto OS, and it's supposed to put your body into ketosis under 59 minutes. So basically, I was doing the diet, and I tried it out, and um, just like Stephanie said, your body becomes fat adapted, but your body can be kicked out of ketosis really easily. So what the Keto OS does, it puts your body, so say I have a bad day, or I eat something, I can drink the Keto OS, and it will put my body into ketosis. But I wanted to talk about some things that you don't realize, you know, you might be doing good, um, feeling like you're eating correctly and nothing's happening. Well, there's a lot of factors that can kick you out of ketosis or you, you make you start using your sugar instead of your fat. Stress is so high. I mean, I'm talking, you know, I can drive here and I'm driving in the traffic, you know, on the freeway with, you know, the rain and everybody's, you know, this guy pulls out in front of me and, you know, I'm throwing on my brakes thinking, you know, I'm going to get to a wreck. Well, that could throw me out of ketosis. So, I mean, you know, you have a bad day at work, your kids are stressing you out, they're home for the summer, and they're like, Mom, I want to do this, I want to do this, you know, can we go here, can we, you know. So, that could put you in stress, under stress. Excessive caffeine. I'm not, you know, caffeine, you can drink caffeine. I'm talking about like a pot, you know, drinking a pot of coffee a day or, you know, and that, so that can kick you out of ketosis. Um, large quantities of protein. So too much protein can kick you out of ketosis. Now, I, you know, protein is good for you, but there are certain levels. I'm, I can't give you the scientific, you know, I have articles and things like that. If you're ever interested, we, you know, we can get that for you. Um, artificial sweeteners like uh, Stevia, um, Splenda, not Stevia, Splenda, yeah. and mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but Splenda, no, no, no. Um, uh, too many keto desserts. Yes, you can gain weight on keto, if you're eating too much fat and too much carbs, you're gonna gain weight. I mean, so there is healthy moderation. 
and it, one of the, uh, this is just in general, if you have a lack of sleep, that can also kick you out of um, ketosis. We, we all know how important sleep is, and studies are showing that the more sleep that you have, you, you know, you need, your body's gonna recover. Um, I'm not, basically, these are the scientists here, those are the ones who have the masters. I've changed, and I uh, sell keto OS because I know how much it's changed and helped me in, in my journey with um, uh, going to a low carb, high fat diet. And I've changed a lot of people's lives. Um, it's helped me with my hot flashes. I used to crash on the couch at 3.30 in the afternoon. That's like, you know, that the kids would get home from school. Um, you know, my husband, we both work out of the house. You know, he would need That's something. True. Then I had to start cooking dinner and then, you know, it's so, um, I couldn't sleep at night. I was waking up two or three o'clock in the morning. I sleep through the night now. Um, muscle recovery. I work out and I'm not, now I'm old now. I mean, okay, I turned 50 this year, but um, yeah, well, no, I I'm actually feel better than I have in many years, but um, I work out, oh, I work out, sorry. That's okay. And, uh, I'm not in pain. My muscle, I have more muscle now. Um, I just started, last year I broke my foot twice and I had to have surgery. So I was off um, my foot for about, well, almost eight months and ha um, was drinking keto and I maintained everything. Um, but then I started back up again in January um, and I feel like I have more muscle now than I did ever even in my years of teaching classes and lifting weights and all that, um, my body composition, this is one, y'all, you know, we have so much great information here, um, but there's one thing that I think that, yeah, I just wanna share with y'all out of my heart is, you know, people expect to change right away. You think that you're gonna go on this diet or this, li I don't call it a diet, it's a lifestyle change. It's the way you're, you're I'm all about health and wellness. It's not, you know, you want to be there for your kids, your grandkids, and that's what this is. You can start at any time. You are setting an example for your family and your children, but people expect to change quickly. It does, you know, you can feel like you're doing this, and Melissa, I'm, I'm drinking this, it's not helping. Well, it, can, it took my sister five months to get into ketosis, and she was doing the diet, just the diet, now she drinks the ketones and it helps her. But you need to just, it's a marathon, not a race. You just gotta, it's gonna take time. And you know, you need to support each other. Um, that's one great thing is, you know, support system. But this is what I wanna tell, this is what I tell people all the time and I wanted to close with this. So everybody bases their healthiness and you know, on, based on this. What is this? Scale. It is a scale. It is a scale. And let me tell you, this is my enemy. And I have tried to break up with this thing a million times. This is, I like, break up with your scale. Get rid of it. It is no good. Because this diet or this style of living is it it's not based on this um a friend of mine uh, suzanne she started the, the diet and people are like i just can't do it i get on it every day your body just get rid of it i, I could go into <laughs> stories i mean i'm guilty every morning put it down do my little tap get on look at it and i feel discouraged even yeah. though i can look at myself in the mirror and say, I look good. But it's this stupid thing that's <laughs> killed you. It's killing America. Are you gonna smash it? No. 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 You should no. cover it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you think they should smash it? No, they should smash, smash it. it. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Down in the parking lot. In the parking lot. I'll, 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 I literally will uh, promise y'all. Because <laughs> if I don't, I still get on it. I know. But this, okay, well, not for the guys. I don't know. Y'all can do this. But what I suggest is find a little black dress or a pair of shorts or a pair of jeans that you haven't been able to wear. Well, yeah. And I don't want any of those pictures. So, so 
So go ahead and find an, an outfit or something that you haven't been able to wear in a long time that you've used to wear and you used to love or go buy it, go get a dress or something that you think, oh, I want to fit into that. Take that, change, start changing the way you're eating. <coughs> And put this in the closet. Mm -hmm. Leave it for inspiration to look at it. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would look so good in that. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> and then a month. It may it could be a little bit longer than a month, but try that on again. That's so funny you said that. I just got a call from a client today, and she said, "I'm really mad at you." And I was like, "What did I do?" She said, "I just bought because she just went on vacation a couple months ago to New York." big trip. She bought brand new clothes for it. She said, none of those clothes fit anymore. They're all like way too big. They're falling off of me. Oh, wow. so, new clothes. I said, well, you shouldn't have bought new clothes. <laughs> exactly. Maybe we can start a keto, keto clothing show. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, I've got a lot of these spots. Yes, I've got a lot. Yeah. So then put this on and this will make you feel better fitting into this than looking at this. Yes. I also went to my drawer the other day and, and um, put on a two, had two pair of shorts that I could wear, but you know, had that little, you know, I could still have that little rollover when I was wearing them. And I put them on the other day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have not been able to wear these in two, two well, I could wear them, but they looked like I was kind of, you know, they were tight and they didn't look good. And like, you know, they looked good. They were loose and they felt good. And I, way more now when I could wear them and they looked good. My body composition is totally different. Mm -hmm. I, um, for me, I don't, I used to have to worry about my cellulite. I don't have to worry about cellulite. I'm, when, I'm telling you, when you use your fat for your fuel, it's going to change you. You're going to feel amazing and it's, there's nothing better than it. So that's what I want to leave with is get rid of your scale. <laughs> find it put something to wear and like I said my product will help you get in you know sometimes you need a little bit of extra boost and that's what I'm here for and I'm also here for support I do have Facebook groups where and where we I do um, recipes give articles of you know scientific facts because I'm not a doctor but you know just all the research that they're doing now we don't know about because you know all everything's the way you know this is all changing it it's you're eating like we should be eating so that like I said I'm here to help I gave y'all a little form for you to fill out I can send you some information I'm gonna post the um, there's a little video that we have and it explains ketones and ketosis it's this little cartoon and it's only like three minutes long we tried to set it up and unfortunately it didn't work but um, we're good to go and um, thanks for letting me come and I hope y'all got a lot out of this and you're going to have samples after yes and we both of us have samples back there of the drinks and she um, and one thing the difference between Stephanie and my products hers are fuel I mean are um, uh, meal supplements that have ketones in it so if I don't want to make my eggs and bacon like I always do every morning I have bacon and eggs um, you can have one of her bars, which I tried and are really good. And um, I, but mine are actual ketones that you're drinking that are putting your body into ketosis under 59 minutes. So, how often do you drink it? I I drink them twice a day. I drink one in the morning, and since I do crash in the afternoon, I um, drink one in the afternoon at about 3:30. Today, you have to drink them quickly. Um, by quickly, what do you mean? Like, well, I mean, like slam. It, put your to keep ketosis in an hour. Can I drink it over an hour? You yeah. should be drinking it in like 15 to 30 minutes. So you don't have to chug mm -hmm. it, but yes, you want to drink, you drink it fast and then your body, as soon as you drink all of it, if you drink it throughout the day, yes, you'll, you'll slowly go into ketosis, but it's better to drink it fast and on an empty stomach too. So, and that's another that we, you know, intermittent fasting, but that could be a whole nother, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother subject. But, Thank y'all for coming. I appreciate it. But like, we have uh, stuff back there for y'all. We're gonna come back up. Don't, I'm, um, uh, Cody. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Come on up. Um, we're gonna go over supplementation too because there's a lot of 
acronyms like BC, B, 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 and BHB and OMG. <laughs> the whole alphabet stew. Um, supplements on the standard process side of things are things that we carry in the office that also are healthy fats would be like your omega 3s, like tuna omega, cod liver oil. Um, we have a whole Nordic Naturals line that have different ratios of like omega 3s and omega 6s and that kind of thing. So we can muscle test you. Um, for anybody who's new, we'll demonstrate muscle testing in a minute because you might still have a question about, well, how do I know if her bars are the right thing or if I need endogenous ketones or which fish oil is the right thing for me. So we actually have a method of testing exactly what your body's deficient in and what's the best source of some of these supplements and nutrients that we're talking about. Um, there's Cataplex F and Super EFF, so we even have pre-digested fats. So some people might have had a gallbladder removed or have um, it, um, digestive issues, and so they can't break down these fats. And so with our patients, we can customize that. So if they're having issues suddenly with digestion because they switched over to a ketogenic type of a diet, we can help support the digestive system in whatever way we can, or give fats that are e more easily digested. Um, you want to talk about MCT oil? Yeah. So most of you have probably heard of MCT and BHB when it comes to keto. So um, prove it has um, BHB, and it's beta-hydroxybutyrate, and um, so it's that, that um, ketone. So basically it's like, a, the best way to describe it is you know, when you eat dietary fat, it's there's this process that takes place to get to break down those molecules into those those three different keto bodies, right? Um, it's very scientific. I won't go into the three different ones. They're all a little bit different. They all have different properties. But when you drink um, BHB or ketones, you basically are just introducing that into your system without going through that process of breaking it down into ketone bodies. So you're just pretty much just like mainlining <laughs> ketones, if you think about it. I mean, you're mainlining it, basically. Instead so, of your body producing it, you're drinking You're it. drinking it's it. It's exogenous, yeah. it's made outside And your, your body, body doesn't know the difference. Yeah, it just, it doesn't know the difference. It's there, and it thinks it's in ketosis. So, which is why they kind of say, it's, it is a hack. I, I drink ketones every day. So, um, yeah, it's a hack to kind of keep you in ketosis, especially maybe if your carbs are a little higher that day or if your energy is run, running a little low, and it just kind of helps your body flip over into that fat burning. So it's, you're basically tricking your body into thinking it's in ketosis, even though maybe it wasn't You know, 30 minutes before you drank the BHB. MCT oil is that medium chain triglyceride that Dr. Christie talked about, and it is um, basically, it's broken down into, directly into ketones in your system. So it's a very um, quick process, those MCTs, our quick process of getting to that palm oil, and there was one other. Coconut, coconut oil, oil palm, it, well, coconut oil, MCT is derived from coconut, coconut oil. oil. It's yeah. just a super concentrated form. So you'll see keto supplements. My shake is an MCT, it's straight MCT. So it's it's just straight up ketones. It's basically, again, you're like mainlining ketones. Mm -hmm. And um, also with um, BHB and MCT, makes you feel super full. like. So you you feel like you again. just like had a huge, I'm like, after I have one of my shakes, I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't eat for like hours and hours and hours. So it really satisfies you. It makes you feel full. It gives you that satisfaction. Sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and especially if you have long days like yeah. me, you just forget because you're just so full for so long and you get really hot. I feel like so hot because like you can feel your metabolism just like shooting away like, oh my it's God, like, the body's just like burning fat. Thing. And uh, yeah, I, I get really hot thing. when I drink BHB and MCT, so. And we do, I also have MCT oil too. We also have yeah. product MCT oil. Okay, all right, so good. Um, and then there's other things that will help with the fat metabolism. So that's another thing. If you've been trying to do keto and you're not getting the results, there might be a reason. Like I just had mentioned digestion. You might not have some of the cofactors like the um, cataplex C, the vitamin D, vitamin K, those types of things. Um, so those are all things that can be specifically tested for your body. Um, when we break in a sec, um, we've got the endogenous ketones. You can try them. Um, we've got the fire team whiskey bars and shakes that you can sample as well. 
Um, and then we're going to raffle off a couple of prizes because it's one thing to sample it here just for flavor and to make sure you like it, but you really do need to take it more long term to know if it's beneficial or is helping you with your goals for weight loss and feeling good and increased performance and mental clarity. Um, we always like to give you resources because what you'll notice is there's a lot of conflicting information out there, not only about nutrition and what's healthy, but even about keto ketosis. So you can follow a ketogenic diet that's so inflammatory and not healthy and in fact you're flooding your body with foods that don't agree with you and um, you'll notice like a lot of the ketogenic sources use a lot of dairy to get the fats. Well a lot of our patients are dairy sensitive or have a dairy allergy. So this um, one book, The Keto Diet here by Leanne Vogel, I really like that one. Um, because it's a dairy-free way of doing ketogenic and she really talks on the same level that we all talk about that there is no one style of ketogenic that fits everybody and so she talks about getting in tune with your body and listening to your body to know what's the best and whether you're in ketosis or all of a sudden you get mental sluggishness and you're like whoops I just flipped out of ketosis like you'll know um, you'll feel the difference um, the other thing I really like about the Keto Diet book by Leanne is that um, there's some surveys in there, so um, it kind of you can take some personal interviews about symptoms and what your goals are, and it'll tell you like how strict, like where to start, versus like that one thing. I know your handout said like five percent carbs and then ninety percent fats, and I don't know what it was, but that's really strict. The yeah. handout, the percentages on there would be the most strict. Um, but then there's some people that do up to like 50 grams of carbohydrates a day, which is pretty moderate, right? I do about 20. 20. But I don't. But now I know. I've been doing it for so long. You kind of know what you can eat. But once you, you, you know, your body, like you yeah. said, you get in tune with your body. Yeah. So I think like some of the fitness apps are good. Like I downloaded a couple on my phone just for your benefit, so I could say yay or nay on them. I think the benefit is just to have an awareness, to get a start to a feel for what is the carb and what foods have higher carb content and what foods have better fuel sources with the fats. So you might want to play around with like MyFitnessPal or do you have a favorite app? You said there's a keto one specific. There, yeah, and there are some little yeah. macro, but I use MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal is the most common one. I mean, that's real easy. And but easy to use. there is a cause to the keto version, right? For my fitness pal. There's always upgrades. Well, you can yeah. have the macro and you, you go put like the percentage of fat, the percentage of uh, carbs, and the mm. percentage of protein. That's You can do it that way instead of the calories. Can, yeah. You okay. still can hack it yeah, and figure you out your ca your calorie yeah. and carb counts just so you can figure out how many grams of carbs and you do well on. So like for us, what we know is for people to be successful in any kind of dietary change, it usually doesn't work great long term for you to go try to go the most strict right out of the gates. So usually if you kind of like step into it and slowly increase the fats and slowly decrease the carbs and get used to it and let your body transition and you'll be able to figure out how strict you need to go with both carbohydrate restriction and fat intake and what pro you know protein amounts are good so it's a learning curve but it doesn't have to be like this whole scientific experiment nobody tonight here talked about monitoring your blood ketones or an expensive <laughs> monitor or equipment or peeing on strips you don't have to do <laughs> that <laughs> you know you don't have to do that is what we want you to know and you can do this easily implement it and that's really like some of these resources are in line with that kind of a mentality and listening to your body and getting it you know it customized to your body's needs um, Nourishing Traditions is one of those, it's a cookbook and it's like the only cookbook that you could literally read from front cover to back cover because there's so much information about traditional nutrition. So that's what Stephanie said about like our ancestors where there were times of feast and there were times of famine and what did they have available. Well the reason why we focus on our ancestors diets instead of these fad diets and what's on Dr. Google and all the popular TV shows and all that is because these are known facts that have stood the test of time that are true and have always been true. Like you don't need new information. We just need to cut out all the commercial processed chemical stuff 
and get, like she said, get the bad stuff out, put the good stuff, like the building blocks, back in, and your body heals itself. Like it will get into balance and utilize these fuels and heal and feel well and beat all sorts of different kinds of issues and imbalances. So these are all tried and true. Um, the Keto Cure is a good one. And then I also put um, Stephanie's website for the Fire Team Whiskey. I know she is super passionate about um, military and first responders, but what she didn't tell you is her programs can be done by anybody. Like, just because you're not military or first responder, I don't want you to think that what she offers excludes you because her programs have meal plans, diets, it talks about, it has all the exercise programs, so like you literally could down, you know, I don't know if they download the program or how they get it, you can talk about that, because I'm not doing it yet, <laughs> but you could do her program and like literally have it, so if you like, not cookie cutter, but if you like to be told what to do and have a step and a game plan and a plan to follow, mm -hmm. that would be an easy thing. Melissa also has a ton of resources. A lot of the handouts that are in your packet are from her, and like she said, she can provide some of the research articles and that kind of stuff if you want to geek out with us and know more of the science. We can definitely get that to you. Um, that ends the formal lecture. We're going to turn the camera off, um, but for our online audience, what I would encourage you to do is um, get to some of these meetings in person because there's some additional benefits like being able to take the samples the question and answer sessions that we do once the camera's off because you know there's certain medical claims and things that we can't say or answer um, to the masses and also um, when you bring guests to our classes your guests all qualify to have a free health screening so if you haven't been muscle tested you'll have the opportunity to do that tonight um, if you do want to, there's a free health screening worksheet that I need you to fill out some basic um, health intake information on there. And then for our members, our patients to the practice, when you bring your guests, you get entered into a raffle to win whatever our <laughs> raffle prize is. So tonight, um, the raffle prizes are by Stephanie and by Melissa. Melissa has a packet, um, a good... Um, sample of some of the Keto OS products. Um, there's a caffeine-free raspberry lemonade. There, what's some another one? Jelly bean. Oh, there's um, a jelly bean one? Yep. Um, Keto jellies. And then, um, the, uh, did I put a heart tart in there too? And we, I have the samples back there so you can taste them also. Okay, but this will give you a more, like you could do it for a few days to get a better <laughs> idea than just the sample. And then Stephanie has so I will give you um, a Fire Team Whiskey sample pack, so all three flavors of the bars and a shake sample and a Fire Team Whiskey shaker bottle to go with your shake. So I'm just going to repeat what she said because she's a little off camera. She's going to give a raffle prize with a shake sample, all three flavors of her bars, and a shaker cup. So go ahead and turn off the camera and then we'll have our get real session.